right now I'm talking I'm talking to Bible student amen, amen. future world changers so I'm talking to a very important people people that would change the world can I have it amen? amen and when you are changing the world you need to be wise not because you go to Bible school, you can make it. Paul's information is worse than ignorance. Can I have an amen? amen? So the first question for a Bible student who is about to change the world is, what is Jesus' vision? That's a good question. If you cannot answer that, I think you have to quit because that is the first original information that you need to know. What is Jesus' vision? The second question is the vision need a strategy. So the second question is what is Jesus' strategy? These two valid questions, if you fail to answer that, you cannot make it. What is the first question? What is Jesus' vision? Because you don't suppose to create your own vision. Jesus need to impart that vision to you. So we don't carry our own vision. We carry the vision of Jesus. Meaning to say you fully understand. Let your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So what is Jesus' vision? If someone asks you. Are you a Bible student? Yes. Are you a pastor? Yes. What is Jesus' vision? Anybody want to volunteer? Or probably you never think about it. Because we are already preconditioned by religion that we join here because I want to become a religionist. So what is Jesus' vision? I see your hand rise, raise. What is Jesus' vision? Okay. What about you? Okay. What about you? Any more? Anyone? To expand his kingdom. You have to answer that because the principle of clarity is so important. If this is not clear to you, you might find yourself one day, you are dancing on the church building. And you thought that's, that's your ministry. You're singing. Nobody said in the Bible, you never read it, go and dance to all the world. No. Go and make recordings. No. Because most people now are confused. The church begin to capitalize their music. And then their church don't grow. Because they have wrong vision. We are called to create music. Who told you? You see, the original information must be settled in your heart first. Before you can do something. Can I have amen? You know... What is Jesus' vision? I want you to write it down right now. Are you ready? Jesus' vision is to conquer the world through preaching the gospel. That's the vision. Is that your vision? Okay? Jesus' vision is to conquer the world through preaching of the gospel. Now, what is the second question? What is Jesus' strategy to fulfill that vision? If he going to conquer the world by preaching the gospel, what is his strategy? Do you know his strategy? You see, if you fail to understand the strategy, you might be doing differently and you, be, you are not able to fulfill the vision. First, you are confused with the vision. Now you are confused with the strategy. This is so important. 
So what is the strategy of Jesus? To conquer the world. Make disciples? Are you sure? That is a statement. That's not a strategy. Do you know every church believe on discipleship, but they never grow their church? Because that's not clear to them. Are you still here? So what is the strategy of Jesus? You want to try it? Okay, what about you? Okay? I need to clarify this. Do you know how he planned to conquer the world? You look and read the New Testament. The first strategy is this. To select the 12 disciples. That's the first strategy. The second step is to form and train the 12 disciples. Are you listening? Is that right? First, select, then form, then send. That's the strategy. Is it clear to you now? So if somebody will ask you, what is the strategy of Jesus? First, you select, form, and send. Let's clarify that again. What? Select, form. So what? Is this in the Bible? Is this in the Bible? So he first select the 12. And then he begin to form the 12. And then he send the 12. So now you are about to start a church. What do you do? You buy a building without a disciple. You make music good without a disciple. <laughs> and now you're asking question. Why our church is not growing? Because you got the wrong strategy. You just create your own strategy. And it is not a biblical strategy. Are you learning something here? <laughs> now you are, you, you are good to go now. Because you know the vision. And you know the strategy. <laughs> Meaning to say. You must clarify your vision. To yourself. That I will finish my course. Because I am going to conquer the world. Like Jesus. And I know how to do it. Because I'm going to follow Jesus' strategy. So what is the strategy of Jesus? Select. Oh, don't forget this. You always forget the complete statement. He select the 12 disciples. Are you ready to disciple 12 people? You've never seen that, right? That's why all churches don't grow. My church grow. <laughs> because I do the writing. Do you know that Peter has no 12? Someone asked me, where do you find in the Bible that Peter has 12? Matthew has 12. I said, uh, it never said there is, but it never said none. And by the way, I don't follow Peter and Matthew. I follow Jesus. Because if Jesus your example, you will never go wrong. So let me clarify again. What is the first step? Are you ready for that? You don't see that in your pastor probably. You don't see that in your church probably. That's why probably you came from a church that never grow. Because the true strategy is missing in the church. Now, who's supposed to carry that, that strategy? What if you become a pastor and your husband is your partner in the ministry, you believe on the vision to conquer the world, to conquer the tri-city. So the question is, you want to win the tri-city? What is your strategy? Oh, we just need to pray. Well, all the pastors are praying, never win the Tri-City. You need to have what? Strategy. You need to have what? Strategy. Oh, it sounds like not the spiritual. But Jesus got a strategy. So the first thing he do before he continue to propagate the gospel is to secure himself that he select the 12. 
and then he begin to form the 12 disciples and then until he sent the how come the 12 is crazy because they need to be formed can I better amen if you try to go to Bible school and nobody form and disciple you you will not make it I'm sorry to tell you you need to be discipled because that's the original design of the vision you don't conquer the city by singing by nice building that's not the strategy that's the good one a good building helps but it can never conquer because you need to go back to the original design how to change a nation so are you ready to disciple 12 people ready are you excited imagine you're a different breed <laughs> because when you come out from this bible school you're a different breed because there will be revival through discipleship here can i be a man so you don't rely on church program you rely on jesus strategy can i have a man now come here what is your name let's say the, he is my disciple you know my vision what is my vision uh, make disciples of all nations again you miss it <laughs> remember what is the vision preach the gospel <laughs> let me clarify again to conquer the world conquer through the world. preaching the gospel okay what is the vision conquer the world through preaching the gospel now what is my strategy make 12 disciples then form them and then send them out okay let me clarify again <laughs> select the 12 form the 12 and send the 12 yes. that's how it is easy yes. make it easy the vision is to conquer the world to preaching the gospel what is the what is the strategy select the 12 from the 12 okay so what do you do now you will select form and send out okay let's say come here you are his disciple so he is one of your 12 for example he is one of your disciple Amen. what do you teach him <laughs> um to be a disciple of jesus christ uh form him sanctify him uh, through truth and teach him you start from the vision start from the vision preach to him the gospel get him saved first get him get him saved first um, and then allow him to become a disciple first um, so, so I selected him formed him and then send him out to make 12 more okay come on let me do it for you okay yes, please. okay please do it for me help me I heard from our pastor that our vision is to conquer the world. Mm. We have to preach the gospel to conquer the world. Yeah. You know what? I select my 12. I'm forming my 12 now. Mm. And I am about to send my disciple, my 12. You are my disciple. You have to believe on the vision. You have to preach the gospel. Yeah. And don't just preach it. You need to have your own strategy. Our, our pastoral strategy is here. Mm -hmm. We select the 12, we form the 12, and we send the 12. Amen. You should supposed to do that. You must be willing to disciple people. You help someone find their way back to God, mm -hmm. and then you help someone to start up their new life. You help someone to be disciple until you can send them. So I want you to become a true disciple because one day you guys are, you're gonna select your disciple. You're going to form your disciple and you're going to send your disciple. Wow. Right? You understand now? Yeah. Okay. Where's your disciple? Come here. You tell them the vision and the strategy. All right, my friend. Our vision is to conquer the world through preaching the gospel. And you're now my disciple if you're going to get saved. So we believe you're saved. <laughs> and our vision, our, our strategy is to go into the world and make disciples, select the disciples 
uh, form and equip them and then send them and that's the vision and that's something you have to carry out to see people saved and nations saved what will happen if we do this on a four generation you don't contaminate the vision I need to have the pure vision to conquer the world by preaching the gospel don't contaminate it be pure okay forget about the 12 number you can start from one <laughs> then you become two then one and two is what 12 <laughs> one each <laughs> okay don't contaminate it so be sure when you transfer the third generation it's the same DNA don't contaminate the vision don't dance don't sing make disciples okay and when you pass it to the fourth generation don't contaminate it be pure in visions so look at this if I disciple my 12 how many disciples I have 12 and then I got my 12 disciples discipling 12 how many people now 144 <laughs> and my 144 will disciple another 12 yeah. what's the number 1728 imagine what will happen if we do that vision here in Pasco Washington is that biblical and the people said that's impossible yeah most of the biblical thing are impossible that's why we call it faith <laughs> when I was doing this in the Philippines nobody believed me until my church grow to 20,000 they said can you teach us <laughs> if you learn that as early as possible and you begin to practice it probably now your church is growing by thousands but they fight against it because nobody is practicing it because the way they do the church is not based on the original design. Can I have your amen? I'm, I'm helping 7,000 churches back there in the Philippines. Most of them are growing churches. Most of them like they started from 20 people, 30 people. Now they got like 500, 1,000 people. They slowly grow. It took them like five, five years to grow their church to 500 to 1,000 people. So what is the vision? <laughs> Conquer the world. What is the strategy? <laughs> Select the 12, form the 12, and then what? You made it, man. <laughs> Thank you. You made it, man. Back to your seat. Are we able to settle on the vision and the strategy of Jesus Christ? I will repeat, that's not my vision. That's not my strategy. I just follow Jesus because I am a follower. I'm not the one who created that. I just follow the strategy and the vision of Christ. Are you a follower of Jesus? You must be a disciple of Christ, right? So we have to propagate this vision and this is strategy the whole aspect and concept of this is discipleship can I better amen discipleship is the missing jewel of the church like for example you came here to study the Bible and I'd like to ask the question do you have disciple if you don't have disciple what are you doing here Oh my God, you're in trouble right now. <laughs> what are you doing here? We just want to learn the Bible. You have to start to the very root and foundation of Christianity. Because you were raised up on the atmosphere where guessing is the name of the game. Probably some of you are not being discipled by somebody. And now you want to go to school because nobody is discipling you. And hoping you will make it because I go to Bible school. 
you will not make it. So I want you to look for somebody who can disciple you. Can I have an amen? But before you are being discipled, be sure the one who disciple you knows the vision and knows the strategy. Can I have an amen? So if I would ask you right now, how many disciples that you have? Do you have at least one or two? I'm not talking about 12 this time, okay? Because this is so crucial. The first thing that I want to teach about discipleship is to get the right idea, right concept of discipleship. So what is a disciple? Now, I'm not teaching inspiring message right now. This is instructional message. Okay? Every Bible school student needs two things. Inspiration and instruction. Amen? Every Sunday, your pastor will inspire you. But when a person is full of inspiration, but they lack knowledge, understanding, and wisdom, they will fail in their ministry. They will fail in their ministry. Because you need wisdom, knowledge, understanding because you have to conduct your ministry based on original design. Amen. You, if you don't miss that, you will succeed. How many more you want to, want, want to be successful in your ministry? Is there someone come here because you, don't, you, don't, I, you, you have nothing to do? Let's go to Bible school. Is that your idea? Or you come here because you feel God called you? Can I bring in? That's another topic to discuss. But when I train pastors, I need to clarify so many things. Clarity is important. You don't go diving with an uncl uh, unclear water. Right? You only dive on something when it is clear. What's the use of diving and you don't see anything? Right? So you want to disciple, but is it clear to you what is a disciple? So we need to begin to clarify things. Are you ready for clarification? Okay. What is a disciple? What is the disciple? Let me clarify this. I believe that if we don't disciple our people in the church, we may win our own battles, but we will lost our generation. This is the importance of discipleship. You can be successful in so many ways, but if we fail to disciple this generation, we fail. So where are the disciple makers? Do you know that there are many pastors today who are not disciple makers? They are just a good preachers. Right? Well, you can grow the church because you have good programs. You have popular musicians or popular artists, but everybody's going to hell. Because they don't understand. That's why God said, I never knew you. Many, one day many will say, Lord, Lord, Lord. And God said, I never knew you. Why? you never been with me. <laughs> While I'm changing the world, you are singing. <laughs> are you listening? Yeah. While I'm changing the world, you are doing your own thing. <laughs> no, one day when God said, when I'm changing the world, I am in the middle of that activity, Lord. While you are changing the world, Lord, I'm there. I'm discipling people so that we could save a generation for Jesus. Amen. This is how important the discipleship. So what is a disciple? Okay. Can we put that outline, please? Can you help me? And jump by is there someone doing that? They don't have it? Okay. What is a disciple? 
three key words. A disciple is a followers of Jesus. You follow Jesus. Not because you follow a program, you're a disciple. Do you know right now you feel you're a disciple because you are going to a Bible school? Not at all. Not because you enter a Bible school, you're a disciple. Are you still here? Because a true disciple is someone who follows Jesus. Not someone who joined the church. Not someone who follow a leader. Not someone who follow by emotions. But someone who follow Jesus. Do you follow Jesus? You are a disciple if you learn to follow Jesus. Number two, a disciple is a fisher of man. You see that? The first disciples, the, the, the first command of Jesus to, to Peter, when he fall, come and follow me and I will make you what? Fishers of men. What's that? That is soul winner. A true disciple is a soul winner. A fisher of men. So we begin to ask the question, how long have you been in the Bible school? One year. How many people got saved? None. What are you doing? I want to finish Bible school. Is there someone got saved? None. I'm still on the school. I don't get the idea. Probably you don't understand what you're doing. <laughs> you come here to win souls and make disciples. Not to complete a course, a program. So probably you enter the school, you are now getting ready to win souls and make disciples. Can I ever amen? Because a true disciple is not just following Jesus. You are a piece of man. Why you become a piece of man? You are born again. When you are born again, the Bible said, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you see in the kingdom? First, you see the king who died for you. Second, that king has a vision. <laughs> you see the vision of the king? What's the vision of the king? To conquer the world. Now you are joining, if you are a follower of Christ, you are joining Jesus to conquer the world. That's why you win souls, right? You see, that's the basic foundation of a true disciple of Christ. Now you are born again. You don't just see the Lord, but you see the purpose of the Lord is to conquer the world. By preaching the gospel and by making disciples. So soul winning is the heart of every disciple. Can I have an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Number three. A disciple is the one who fellowship with fellow disciples. You can't do life alone. <laughs> so that's why Jesus select the 12 so that the 12 would live in community. They will learn how to fellowship. Do you still remember when the three... Uh, do you still remember the 12 disciples? Huh? And then when they begin to hear that Jesus will reign one day, the mama says, Jesus, if you make my son become the right hand, the left hand, can you do that, Lord? Still remember that? <laughs> remember that? <laughs> and they begin to bickering one another because they are now in community. You need to understand when you have a fellowship with the fellow believers, there are some people in the middle of that group crazy, <laughs> right? Probably you've been attending this training. You begin to live in the community and you begin to see the defect, <laughs> uh, the bad attitude. Well, that's part of it, baby. <laughs> Welcome to our Jesus community because this is not a fellowship of perfect people. Because when you are in the middle of that fellowship, you will begin to, to, to leave the gospel in your life. That you begin to learn how to redeem someone when they fail. You need to learn how to renew and help the person change. And you need to learn how to forgive so that they could be restored. That's our community. Amen. You cannot isolate yourself. A true disciple never isolate themselves. You need to learn... To live with those crazy people. Amen. Sometimes I disciple and I said, God, 
Why do you give me 12 crazy disciples? Or yell, yeah, because you are crazy too. <laughs> Amen. There's no one perfect undergoing construction, right? So just learn how to live with crazy people. But we have to practice redemption, renewals, and practice restoration. The true disciple learned that. So what is a true disciple? Three words. One, a true disciple is a follower. Number two, features of man. Number three, good on fellowship. I think you made it already now. You look like a disciple now. Why? Because you want to follow Jesus. Number two. Fisher of man. Number three. So if I will call back again the three guys here, I will ask them, what is a disciple? Uh, uh, we must follow Jesus. Good. Number two. We must become a fisher of man. Good. Number three. Uh, I need to enjoy the fellowship with my fellow believers. But pastor, they are crazy. Part of the game. <laughs> Say amen. You don't isolate yourself. You don't quit. We, we don't see somebody packing their bags. Why? I don't like to go to school. They're all crazy. Wherever you go, there are always crazy people. You might marry one. <laughs> Have mercy, Lord. So what is a disciple is a good question. Okay? What is a disciple? Now, what is discipleship right now? First, I answer the question, what is a disciple? A disciple is a follower, pictures of man, and fellowship. Knows how to fellowship. Now, what is discipleship? First, what is a disciple? Now, what is discipleship? Because you're going to disciple people. Okay? Discipleship is all about relationship. What is discipleship? Okay, there are three levels of relationship when you're discipling people. Okay? You will disciple people. You have to teach the person what is discipleship. Discipleship, number one, means relationship with Jesus. That's why you follow Jesus. Because you have what? Relationship. That is the first relationship. Discipleship is a relationship thing. So don't tell me because you see in the church you're a disciple. Do you know that many people who worship the Lord, lead worship, are not having a relationship with Jesus? So what is discipleship? Discipleship is all about relationship. The first relationship that you need to have is your personal relationship with Jesus. Can I have an amen? It means that you follow the command, the precepts, the standard, and the principle of Jesus. I am having relationship with that Jesus. Meaning to say if I have relationship with Jesus, whatever you want, Lord, that's what I want. Whatever you don't like it, Lord, I don't like it too. Because we have relations. It's all about relationship with Jesus. Second is relationship with lost people. What is a disciple? Discipleship is relationship. Once you become a disciple, you need to continually connect and relate to unchurched people. You hear that? Yeah. When I trained my church to do this, one of my disciples told me, Pastor Real, I'll be resigning on my job. I said, we have prayed about it, right? Yes, Pastor. About five years ago, we prayed about my job. I got it. I got promoted. I earned a lot, but I need to go and change my job now. I mean, I changed my company. I said, why, pastors, most of my office mates are now born again Christians. I need to find a place where I can win people to the Lord, not just to have a job. <laughs> you know, the mentality of the Christian is this. I want to go to a Christian company. Have you heard about it? 
We don't do that in the Philippines. We go to the unchurched people. So that we could win. Because a true disciple relate to the lost people. Can I have amen? You know why you cannot select your 12? Because you are, you are already disconnected to the world. Are you listening? Most of our members are still connected to the unchurched people. Because that's our vision. They are our vision. You learn something here? We need to become pieces of men. So when we said, I am a disciple, it means I am relating to Jesus. And now, because I am a fisher of men, I should be related to the unchurched people. Do you still have unchurched people, friend? Huh? Come on. You have to thank God. Lord, I thank you for my classmates, for my neighbors. Those people, one day. <laughs> you don't even know that I'm your pastor. Right? You don't even know that I'm your disciple. But wait until you it manifests. <laughs> Number three, not just relationship with the lost, but relationship with other believers. Relationship with God, relationship with the lost, relationship with the father believer. This is the fellowship aspect of disciples. So meaning to say, while I am enjoying my life with God, I should enjoy my life with you. <laughs> say amen. amen. <laughs> How many Christians today said, I have to go out on this church. I need to go and find another church. Because they don't know the meaning of what is discipleship. You, do, you cannot find a perfect church. You want to have a perfect church? You have to leave the church so that we would become perfect. <laughs> Amen. As long as you are here, we can adapt. <laughs> because everybody is on their ongoing transformations. Hallelujah. So now I think it's better, it's getting clearer now. Okay? So again, what is the vision? To conquer the world. What is the strategy? Select and form and send. The hardest part, probably you select it like, or if you have many members in the church, you can select it like, Jesus select it like for the next 72 hours. He completed the 12. <laughs> but you, you have to complete it for 72 years. <laughs> because you're too slow. Because you want to select the perfect one. If I would disciple, I need to find the right person. So you've been doing that for the last six years. You still do not have disciples. Because you forget you need to form. <laughs> Say amen. So when you select, that's okay. If the person is crazy, that's okay. Let's go to the next level. What is the next level? Form. <coughs> because this people is unformed. You see, Peter, why Jesus constantly spent time with Peter, John, and James? Do you still remember that? They were brought to the mountain of transfigurations. And someone told me, Pastor, one pastor teach, like, the tree is the core leader of the twelve. I said, wrong. Jesus need to spend time to those troublemakers. <laughs> because James and Peter and John are constantly bring trouble. So, so that the nine will be at peace, you three go with me. And they, the three feel like we're close with Jesus. <laughs> Jesus said, no, my eyes is on you. <laughs> so, if you are my disciple, you are constantly spending time with me but when you are crazy the more time we have <laughs> say amen oops you're not doing that when you found a crazy person we need to leave him left him that guy is crazy we don't want to spend time with him 
wrong. <laughs> the more the crazier, the more you spend time. <laughs> oh, you don't like that. <laughs> then you're not good on discipleship. How many more you want to disciple people? <laughs> so this time when you see crazy people, you said, I was born for you. <laughs> Can I have your amen? <laughs> and sometimes when we saw crazy people, our disciples, we, we simply give up or quit, you know. No. You need to learn how to disciple people. You need to patiently wait because they are on the ongoing process. Can I be a man? How can my church become a disciple-making church? How can we make our church become a disciple-making church? Because if your church is a disciple-making church, many things will happen in your church. Because your church was run by the original design. Okay? Listen. Any church without disciple making process will not make it because the design is already given to us by Jesus. We just need to follow Jesus. We don't need to create our own design. Say amen. Do you know I find out that many churches today were simply a correct imitation of, their, of the another church from the city. That's why we failed to transform America. Because we copied the wrong church. It's time to go back to the Bible and find the vision again and look for the strategy of Christ and go back to the original design. Are you getting the original design right now? <laughs> Amen? Uh, what is a disciple? Is a follower, okay? He is a fisher of man and he loves fellowship with other fellow believers. Amen. A true disciple have personal relationship with Christ and a personal relationship with the lost and a personal relationship with fellow believers. That's discipleship. That's the concept of discipleship. So if you want your church to become a disciple-making church, number one, you need to begin to engage our church in our to our culture and community with the gospel of Christ. Get ready for engagement. You will engage on the culture of your city. <coughs> you will engage in your community bringing the gospel of Christ. Okay? After these sessions, I will be teaching you the gospel. Because nowadays, most people don't fully understand the gospel. <laughs> I promise you, after this session, I will ask every one of you, what is the gospel? And then you will find 40 kinds of gospel here. But after I preach, you will know only one gospel that we preach. Because even in the first Old Te uh, the New Testament, the people are confused about the gospel. That's why America is always in trouble because we bring religion to our nation, not the true gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to begin to engage our churches to our culture and our community with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Meaning to say your church must be 100% soul winner. Irregardless of the culture of the city, irregardless of the situation of your community, you must engage. Come on, say the word engage. engage. We are not avoiding this culture. We are engaging on this culture. Amen. We are not avoiding. We are engaging. If you want to have a disciple making church, get ready to engage. Amen. And after you engage the people, you evangelize them. Number two, you need to establish biblical foundation on these believers. Establish biblical foundations. So what I did to my church is after I preached the gospel, we have one material that we call start up your new life in Christ. 
we, we, I, I, I write a book with 10 lessons so that all my disciples will, will put the new believer on that lesson of foundation. Because immediately the day they come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, they need to put that foundation. Number three, you need to equip the believers in basic ministry skills. You need to teach them basic ministry skills. Like, like one verse, evangelism, follow-up ministry, the basic of discipleship. You need to equip believers in basic ministry. Number four, you need to empower them to make disciples. You need to empower them to make disciples. So if you want your church that you pastor become a disciple-making church, engagement to unchurched people, you must learn how to establish biblical foundation on the new believers. And these believers, you need to equip the believers in basic ministry skills until you can empower them to make disciples. You learn something here? I believe... This is basic disciple making. You learn something? Probably that topic that I teach you will change the way you think about your ministry. Amen. You will go out from this place and you will say, I want to make disciples. Amen. Amen. Now I carry a vision. Wherever the Lord sent me, I will do the same thing. What is my vision? I will conquer the world through preaching the gospel. Number two, what is my strategy? I will what? I will select my 12. I will form my 12. And I will what? Send, this, send my disciple. Lord, I thank you for this moment. I pray that the impartation of this original information will come through their heart, Lord God, by revelation. I pray that this revelation will establish this student, these disciples, to conquer the world for Christ. I pray that they will believe, Lord, that this is all about disciple making, raising people to the next level, raising leaders, Lord, so that we could conquer the world. Thank you for this moment. Be glorified, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's give a clap of praise to God. And we will have some, like... 10 minutes break.